So, um, last lesson, we looked a bit at the normal distribution. We looked at the standard normal distribution. And we used the standard normal distribution, the rule that z equals x minus mu over sigma. And we used that to convert into a standard normal. And I said at the time that that was useful for the next bit that was coming up. And that's what we're going to look at now. So, what we're going to use that for is we're going to use it to find the mean and standard deviation of a distribution whenever we don't know them. So if we don't know what the mean is, we can find it using that standardization, the z, moving it into the standard normal. So if we just look at an example, and we'll go through how we find one of these. So if I have a random variable, x, which has a normal distribution, and I'm not going to know the mean. It's going to have a mean of mu and a standard deviation of 4. And I'm also going to tell you that the probability that x is less than, sorry, x is less than 23 is equal to 0 0.9015. And we're going to use this to find that mean. So what we need to do is we need to think about what we know here in this question. It's always useful just to draw a little sketch of this. So we know that we've got a normal distribution. We've got our mean, which is mu. We've got sigma, which is 4. We know that the probability under 23 is 0 0.9015. So 23 has got to be up here somewhere. And this area down here, all of this area, I know is 0 0.9015. So there's no way of us working out what that value of mu is as it stands. We can put it into the inverse normal because in the inverse normal we need mu and sigma and it gives us the x value. So what we need to do is we need to change this into a standard normal distribution. So if I change this into a standard normal distribution, we know that this value is 0. This 23 is going to be a value there. Sigma is 1. And this area underneath here is still going to be that 0 0.9015. It's the same area, the same curve. We've just kind of moved that or changed that across. So at this point, I'm going to go to my calculator. And I'm going to say, right, can I work out this little z value in here? Can I work out what this z value is if this area is 0 0.9015? So remember, that's the inverse normal on your calculator. So you're going to inverse normal. The area to the left is 0 0.9015. Mu is 0. Sigma is 1. So if we do that on our calculator, we could type that in, and we're going to get that the z is, you should get 1.2901. Check that that you get the same answer for that. So this value here is 1.2901. What I now need to do is say, well, how would I link that? How is that and this linked? How's my z value and my x value linked? So last lesson, we used the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma. And I'm just going to put in what I know. So z is that one. So 1.2901 equals x is 23 minus mu, which I don't know, divided by sigma, which I do know is 4. And I can then just solve that equation. Sorry, sigma's not 4. Sigma's going to be 2, isn't it? Sorry, my mistake. If sigma squared is 4, sigma's 2 going to put a 2 in there. So we're going to put 2 in for that one. If I multiply that by 2, 
I get what 2.5802 equals 23 minus mu. Mu comes out as being 20.42 if I do it to two decimal places for that one. And that sounds about right. This one was 23. We know it's going to be less than 23. That's going to be what we get for our mean. Okay, finding the standard deviation, you would do in exactly the same way, except your calculation at the end, the unknown is just going to be this sigma. You're going to know mu when you put it into your equation. It gets a little bit harder if you don't know either. So for our second example, we're going to have a look at what happens if we don't know either the mean or the standard deviation. Oops. So that's better. Um, let's go with. So we've got a random variable. And we don't know mu or sigma squared. We don't know mu or sigma. I'm going to tell you that if p less than 9 is 0 0.5596 and p bigger than 14 is 0 0.0322, can we find mu and sigma? So actually, this is a really similar method, but because we've got two unknowns, we need to have two equations. We're going to end up with some simultaneous equations to solve here. So first bit, if I draw that with an x, mu sigma squared, I know that the probability under 9 is 0 0.5596. So 9 must be just above mu. I must have a 9 up here somewhere. This area is 0 0.5596. And the other information I'm given is that if I've got my distribution above 14, this area up here is 0 0.0322. That's that area. So we can't do anything with these until we convert them into our standard normal. So this one as a standard normal, it's going to be zero. Sigma's one. I'm going to have a Z value here. I'm going to call that one A because I'm going to get two different values. That value is 0.5596. And for the other side, we're going to have a normal distribution. That's zero. Let's call this value B. This area is 0 0.0322. And sigma's one. So this time I'm going to need to set up two different equations to solve this. So if we go to this left-hand one here, if I look up inverse normal, 0 0.5596, because that's the area underneath here, if I look that up on my calculator, I get a value that A must be 0 0.14995. If I look up this one on my calculator, now if you've got the bigger calculator, you can look up this area, if not, we're going to have to look up this area on the calculator. So just remember that that area down there would be 1 minus that. So that's 0 0.9678 that I'm looking up. And that should give me that B is... Give me B is 1.8494. So those are my two values. And now all I need to do is I need to use the conversion between x and z. So remembering that z equals x minus mu over sigma. For this first side, 
my equation is going to be 0 0.14995 equals 9 minus mu over sigma or 9 minus mu equals 0.14995 sigma. If I do the same on the other side, I'm going to get 1.8494 equals 14 minus mu over sigma or 14 minus mu equals 1.8494 sigma. And I've then got two equations and two unknowns. doesn't really matter how we go about solving those but you need to solve those two equations. If we solve those two equations, we should end up with sigma being 2.94 to 3 sig fig, and we end up with mu being 8.56 to 3 sig fig. You can double check. You can solve those using your equation solver on your calculator. That's fine. Right, once you have taken those down, make sure you understand what you're doing. Let's just have a go at one or two of these questions. We'll finish off some of these in the lesson next week. But if you could have had a go at a few of these, that would be really useful. So it's page 48, exercise... Oh, no, it's not. Hang on. Stop. Let me just get your textbook. Okay, what you're going to do then is, in your book, it is page 403. And if we have a look at exercise 1.6, let's have a go at question... One A, if you like, and then if you have a look at exercise one point seven, and again, just have a go at question one A, and if you finish with that, let's do the same again, exercise one point eight. Question 1a. And then what we'll do is we'll look at a few of the more complicated ones next lesson. But have a go at those three, the first easy one in each exercise, and then we will move on.